It's all wet, it is skip Lee. This is chapter 11, video part two. So you're still gonna need your book, your minims book, and we are going to start on page 66. So if you'll turn your book to page 66, we will get busy and make this a short one for you. All right, in chapter 11, we're talking about how that the ending on nouns changes and why that does. The ending on a verb tells us something. What does the ending on a Latin verb tell us? Remember, right? Who is doing the action, okay? So let's say our endings together for verbs, our present tense verb endings. That means it's um, these verbs are translated in the present tense as action happening now. So what are these endings? Let's say them together. O, S, T, M, U, S, T, I, S, and N, T. All right, so let's take the verb scribo, I write. If it's scribo, it means I write. Scribis, you write. Scribit, what does that mean? He writes, or she, depending on who you are. Uh, scribimus means we are writing. Scribitis, you all are writing. And scribunt means you are writing. Sorry, I just got a text. I'm my mind is working. I'm hoping that that text doesn't show up on this video. I don't think so. All right, so uh, scribunt means they are writing. So with the NT at the end, it means that they are doing it. All right, so the ending on verbs tells us who's doing the action. The ending on adjectives gives us a message. What does that tell us? It tells us the uh, gender of the word, and it also tells us the number, whether it's singular or plural. All right, the ending on a noun tells us what job it's doing in the sentence. All right, so everybody together, what does the ending on a noun tell us? What job it's doing in the sentence. What is it? The job it's doing in the sentence. All right, so every noun so far that we've seen has been the subject of the sentence. So when that changes, when it changes from the subject to the object of the sentence, the direct object, meaning it's receiving the action instead of doing it, it changes its ending. And that ending tells you that it's the direct object, okay? It tells you what it's doing in the sentence. All right, so let's listen to page 67. We'll listen to the second half of the story. And then if you noticed, if you looked at, get the um, chapter 11, uh, copy that I made you and it's in the documents you'll see that both stories are translated there so you can check your translation so here we go with chapter 11 part 2 goodbye to Regina goodbye to Regina Candidus Flavius and Lepidina arrive in Eboracum where Barates is preparing for Regina's funeral. Barates, coronam portat. Flavius, lucernam portat. Lepidina, anulam portat. Scultor, titulum splendidum sculpit. After Regina's body has been cremated, her bones are collected and put into a pot. The pot is then put into a pit with other items which Regina may need in the next world. Flavius et Lepidina lucernam et aunulum in urlam de pununt. Barates coronam in sepulchrum ponit. All right, that was chapter 11. Chapter 12. Whoops. God. Thought I pressed stop. All right, chapter 12 will be next week, probably. Yep, next week. All right, so in chapter 11, today or whenever you're watching this, I want you to translate that second part of the story and then check your answers with that answer key that I gave you in the documents page in the lesson plans. That's where you find it. All right, but for now, keep your book open and I wanna go through um, the Latin roots section on page 66. Remember what Latin? A derivative is right oh goodness I hope so a derivative is an English word that comes from a Latin word 
okay, a derivative. It comes, it, it's got the root of it is a Latin word. And remember, over half the words, over half, the two-syllable words that we speak every day have a Latin root word in them. Pretty awesome, huh? Goodness. So that's one of the great things about learning Latin. If you learn the vocabulary in Latin, it gives you a nice little treasure of root words that you know what they mean. All right, so let's look at this section. There's three three sentences, three points to con three words to consider here in the Latin root section. Number 1 says which English word with a meaning similar to receives comes from the Latin word acipit. Now, if you just look at that word, it's so close in spelling to the word that we're looking for here. So the Latin word is acipit. It means receives. It can also be translated what? Accept. Right. A-C-C-E-P-T, accept. So it's very similar in the same meaning. In fact, look at Minimus. He's holding, holding up two C's there. If you can spell a keep it correctly in Latin, you will remember to use a double C in the English word. Accept, to receive, A-C-C-E-P-T. All right, number two. In the Bible, what are the epistles of St. Paul? All right, now, we know, we've studied, uh, hopefully you know, uh, we've gone to Sunday school for a long time. I've gone to Sunday school ever since I was a baby in the nursery. I don't know that that counts as Sunday school, but whatever. All right, so I've been learning about the Bible since I was a child, and we all know the stories about Paul and how that his name first was Saul and how he was a horrible person because he went around killing Christians. He hated them. Um, he was one of the Jews, and um, he learned in the synagogue, and he thought he thought the Jews were messed up. Anyway, he went around killing them, and the Lord changed that. Remember, he was on the road to Damascus, and he struck him down with a bright light, and he changed his whole life, and he changed his name to Paul, and then Paul went all over the world taking the gospel. Anyway, when he wrote letter, he went to a, a church and he would stay there for a while. And then when he visited them again, he would write them letters. A lot of the letters, a lot of the books of the Bible are letters that Paul wrote from a jail. And he wrote back to church, uh, the church in Ephesus for Ephesians or the church at Corinth for Corinthians. All right, so those are called Paul's epistles. That word, epistles? It's from the Latin word epistula. It's in your notes. It's even in dark letters in chapter 11 in your noun list. Epistula. Okay, same root word. And it's just the Latin word for letter. So the English word epistle comes from the Latin word epistula. That's mean, that means letter. So Paul's epistles are simply his letters to these churches that he had visited and invested in. All right, number three. In this chapter, we're learning about uh, poor Barates. Barates has lost his wife, Regina. And in English, we would pronounce that Regina. But in Latin, it's pronounced Regina. And um, he's good friends with Candidus. So he sends him a letter, and he tells Candidus that um, Regina has died. So Candidus and Flavius and Lepidina go to visit Barates. And that's what's happening in... Um, that second half of the story. So anyway, um, they introduced the word to you, mortua. Look at it, number three. Check the meaning of the Latin word mortua. Now answer these questions, which involve this Latin word. All right, so then it gives us three different derivatives, three different derivatives, words in English that come from this Latin word mortua, which means dead. All right, so mortua means dead. All right, now letter A. What is a mortuary used for? All right, a mortuary. It's a place where they keep dead bodies before they're buried. It's a place where they prepare the body for burial. And obviously, it's a mortuary. That Latin root, mort, M-O-R-T, means dead. All right, so that's a place where they keep the dead body and prepare it for burial. Number B, Letter B, what does it mean to be mortal? We are all mortal. 
And we have seen that even more these days, and especially in the news when they're reminding us every day about how many more people have passed away because of the virus. All right, so mortal just simply means we're going to die someday. We're all mortal. And we need to realize that without Jesus, without accepting him as our Savior and what he did for us on, our, on the cross and paying for our sins, we have to pay for our own sins. And none of us want to do that. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Um, on the worst, horrible, most wicked person in the world, we wouldn't want that. All right, so we're all, in, uh, we're all mortal. And um, that means we have to die someday. This, this body, this flesh is going to die. So anyway, that's just what that word means, mortal. So then letter C, it uses the word immortal. Uh, what is special about an immortal? Now, the, we know that the Greeks and Romans were really messed up in their belief about God. And they had a whole bunch of them, Zeus and Apollos and Olympus and mm, I don't even know all the Greek names of the all and Roman names um, of gods because I believe in the one and true God, Jehovah God. But anyway, we're learning about the Romans because they spoke Latin and um, they believed that their gods were immortal. So take the word mortal, which means uh, you're gonna die someday. And if you put the prefix M in front of it, that means not dead. So they thought their gods um, don't die. And of course we know that Jehovah God uh, Jesus does not die because he never had a beginning and he never has an end and he's watching over us every day and all the time everywhere we are he knows where we are and we can hear us and he can see us and knows what we're doing so I hope you're doing your work well and you're finishing up strong as of yesterday it was four whole weeks left of school that's it just four weeks and the last week of school spoiler alert I'm not gonna put any Latin work on that last week. So we're gonna finish it up, do what we can do in these last three weeks, and then we're gonna be done with Latin until the fall. So, hope you have a good day. This is chapter 11, part two, and voila.